guys and welcome back to vlog number 34 we played nine hours yesterday and won a little bit over a thousand dollars and it was a pretty uh, smooth session we were actually up a little bit more but uh gave back some at some at the end so let's go over our reports as we are uh, heading to this uh, weekend i actually uh, will be able to put in a lot of hours this weekend in exchange for uh, taking uh, taking next week off for spring break, most likely. We are now 90, 19 out of 34 winning sessions for a win rate of 55%, which is inching up to the 60 mark that we have been at. Is it uh, is good given that uh, at the beginning, middle of the month, January, we were around 20, 21%, and we are at exactly $46 per hour still below what I would like but we're up over 15,000 now after 33 hours and we are officially on a heater now winning eight of our last 10 sessions we could still keep going and let's see if we could go 10 in a row I've done it before I've done 13 in a row before that's the longest so we'll see Let's go to uh, one hand history because uh, this is the uh, part of the most interesting hand history of the night. We have the effective stack is 1500. We have an under the gun razor, under the gun two razor. We call him non believer. He raises for $15. I am uh, in middle position two, around 1500 also. I have six of clubs, six of hearts. And so this is a player that, because of the stack, I wanted to raise it a little bit more to build the pot as well as I could I think I could outplay him this was the mark on the table so I went ahead and raised it to $45 and to photo out everybody so that even my pair of six could have a chance at showdown value against this player so and then it folds that he calls the flop comes 10 of diamonds 6 of spades and 5 of diamonds 2 diamonds give me the uh, set draw I do a standard seed bet of 65 he calls 7 of heart comes it's a you can, it hits a lot of his calling ranges, so this is a good card for me. The only bad thing is that uh, if he had eight nine, then he had his gut shot. But I think there's a lot of pair plus draw now. There's a lot of diamond draws, so I went ahead bet one hundred forty five dollars, and he calls. And the river becomes a four spade. It's not a good card, right? So let's go ahead and then break down this the everything at this point. When he calls. What do we? What kind of range do we put him on? We could put him on a diamond draw, maybe an ace with a six of diamonds, maybe. So it could be a ten with nine, ten eight, pocket eights, pocket nines. So any of those ranges is there, and the reason we call him a non-believer is because that's his pattern. He doesn't believe. So I went ahead and bet two hundred fifty dollar for value. Thinking, knowing, thinking that if he has an eight here, he'll probably re-raise me, so I can do a bet fold. Knowing this player that he's not gonna bluff me in this spot, I don't see him having a three for the bottom end of the straight. I see him; he could have nine, ten, he could have pocket nines. So those are the maybe even ten jack offsuit because ten jack suited would have raised bigger preflop. So those are the ranges I put him on, and I thought that he was enough full of weakness and air that I could go for value here and I went ahead and bet the 250 and he tank 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 and he calls and mucks so I think we were right that uh, we I might, if I were to guess his range a pocket pair of nines would have probably raised 20 so my guess is maybe 9 10 offsuit that would be with the exact range that I would put him on to see to raise this kind of range could be ace ten offsuit, but I think it was a uh, anything offsuit was well, the fifteen dollar raise, and anything and it can be a probably would not a pocket pair of suited, because I already saw his uh, raise size be before that with uh, suited and pocket pairs. That was the hand. I am practicing on how to go through this quicker. This is uh, remember I said this is this vlog is also my opportunity to practice developing a lot of certain skills and. I think talking slow was one of the issues. Saying um a lot, saying so a lot. I noticed that. I'm working on it. 
If there's anything else that I could work on, please do tell. See you in a bit. Welcome back guys. Ready for some reflecting and contemplating before we head into the weekend. Today we're going to reflect on pain, mental pain. And we're going to try to penetrate it. Let's first try to conceptualize something. I have a nose, but I don't have a right or left nose. I do have a right arm. But how can you tell I have a right arm? Because there's a relation to a left arm. Likewise, how do we know what pleasure is if we don't have something to compare it to? To know what the feeling good is and how do we like something? So pain is almost a necessity. It's almost the flip side of pleasure. We just don't see it because we, so we think that the two are separate when one is in relation to the other. One cannot exist without the other. So, but our goal is to reduce the amount of pain and increase the amount of pleasure. But that's not always possible. Sometimes the pain is there. So how do we handle it, right? Well, let's, let's penetrate a little bit more. What happens when we feel the pain? Well, what happens is our inside, our core, gets starts turning. And then it either goes down to our, uh, our, our stomach or up to our mind and then you see, feel it throbbing. And this is a result of a higher a rise of energy level, right? We said it in the past where negative emotions carry with it a lot of energy. That's why we get worked up, we get angry, we, we just can't control ourselves because the energy is overwhelming us. Whereas when we're feeling pleasure, well, things are cool and subsided and we enjoy it because the energy level is low. So when we feel pain, what we should try to do then is try to not avoid it, not to hide from it, not to escape it because it will just be there and it will come back. And then the next time it does, we're just going to do the repetitive. What we can do instead is try to cultivate it, cultivate the energy that arises with pain. Because yesterday we mentioned loneliness where the perception of loneliness causes the rising of pain. So when this pain arises, the, the best thing that we can do is not to do anything, but just to watch it and just penetrate it and just continue to observe it. Because what happens is that eventually that energy level will slowly go back down, back down, back down. And you can see this and you can practice this at the poker table. Anytime you incur a loss, the pain is there. It's real. Our perception has, has caused the rising of the pain. And because of that, the energy level, and that's why we go on tilt, that's why we do silly things, play bad, we cannot concentrate because our perception has been distorted now. We cannot focus and see things for what they really are. But if we can practice, take this opportunity at the poker table each time that we lose to practice cultivating this pain, cultivating this, this energy so that later on we can harness it for our own purpose, our own good. And because all the energy, we can use it to motivate us to do things, to be more compassionate, to help other people more and to reach out because we have all this energy now and it's no longer pent up. And you can even go further because what happens when you, we have all this energy that rising from pain, right? Well, eventually we have two options. We either escape and avoid it or so some of us, we break down and we just 
let it out cry, right? But that's not a bad thing also because that energy has to be let out somehow, either in a positive way or a negative way. And, and just crying it out, letting it out is the best form because you, you just you let that energy dissipate and you watch it and you're honest with yourself and you've done the right thing. And what happens is next time that you feel that pain, well, you're able to restrain yourself more, you're able to see it better, you're able to control yourself, and you're able to deal with it better. And it, it's not a one day thing, you just gotta work on it, you know, work on it. And every time that pain is there, it's right here, you just gotta watch it, and you just gotta sit with it and let it be. Don't try to subdue it or escape, because it won't work. It will come back, and it will come back worse. Be with it, hang with it, treat it like it's isn't a part of your life and cultivate it and use it for your own good. See you next week.